What's up, Super Dads and other viewers? Today, I come to you with a shocking fact, and that is that you are being misinformed by 99% of fitness in, in, <laughs> enthusiasts and influencers on the interwebs these days, uh, certainly on YouTube. Okay, and I'm gonna explain why that is using an analogy. Now, here's an analogy for, for building muscle. Okay, think about when you're, when you're getting a tan, okay? How do you do that? Well, you need to expose yourself to enough sun that your skin and your body produces an adaptive response, which is, you know, it produces more melanin, so the color of your skin gets darker, right? That's, that's the basic mechanism. Now, you can see pretty obviously from this analogy that when it comes to, you know, physical adaptations in your body, Frequency alone isn't enough. So if I live in Alaska and I go outside every day and I get one minute of sun exposure, I will not get a tan from that because I have not triggered the adaptive response. The, the dose wasn't sufficient to trigger it and frequency alone won't do it. And so just going into the gym to, to, to touch the weights or whatever, the, the phrases that people use or, you know, things like getting in, just getting in extra volume, these sorts of things. Uh, most of it's just nonsense. <laughs> it's a waste of your time at, at the sort of, at the least it's a waste of your time. And at the worst, it's going to predispose you to injury and breakdown and overtraining. Uh, so there's that to consider. Now, uh, there is, you know, basically the one difference between the muscle building and tanning analogy is basically the, the different timing. Now, it take, to getting a tan or producing more melanin in your skin happens relatively quickly, right? So if I go to the beach one day, the next day, assuming I don't get burned, the next day my skin will be a bit darker. Even, even that same day, my skin will probably get a little bit darker. And I can probably go back again the next day and it'll be darker still, right? And obviously that doesn't happen as quickly when you are talking about muscle because, you know, basically with producing melanin, all your body needs to do is up upregulate its production of, of melanin, right? Whereas when you're talking about building muscle as a, an, a, an adaptive response to exercise, you're going to have to first repair damage, which takes a while. And that's usually when people talk about muscle, muscle protein synthesis being elevated for 48 hours after a workout. Like that's because your body's repairing things. That's not because it's, uh, you know, producing ad adaptations to make you more resilient to future bouts of exercise. That happens after the repair happens. And so Think about how long it takes if you like get a cut or a scrape or something like that. Like how long does it take for the skin to heal completely, right? To come back and rebuild itself so that it looks and functions the same as it normally did. It takes a while, right? So why would muscle be faster than that? You think it's faster to build larger muscles than it is to just repair a little scrape on your skin? Skin is on the surface, man. Uh, it's, it's gonna take a lot more time. Muscles are larger and, and they, take long, they take more nutrition, they take more time to build, okay? So it's gonna take longer. So the timing is different in, the, in, these, in this analogy, however, it is very instructive, okay? And it's very instructive because it also shows us what role genetics play in this, in the whole picture. Now there's a lot of influencers out there on fitness who basically say like, you know, Anyone who talks about genetics is just coping, man. It's just cope, right? That for they don't work hard enough or, you know, uh, it's an excuse or something like that. Well, I've been training consistently for 15 years, uh, you know, and that's just, that's just, you know, trying to build muscle and strength and stuff like that. I mean, I've been doing sports and exercise since I was five, right? And it's still 35 years or something like that. So... I don't think it's that I'm lazy and I, and I basically go to failure on every single set that I do. And, uh, you know, I've worked out so hard and so much that I've injured myself plenty of, myself plenty of times. So that I don't think it's that I don't push it hard or I'm, a, I'm whatever, a wuss or whatever their excuse is for this perspective. No, hey, listen, genetics are a real 
freaking thing, man. <laughs> so uh, my heritage is, you know, Danish and Northern European and stuff. And there is a certain amount of tan that I can get, right? And, and it will happen relatively quickly. I actually get a little bit tanner than you might expect. But beyond that point, if I want to get more tan, right, you're talking about I'm going to need to bust out the cocoa butter and I'm going to need to start taking, I don't even know what supplements to take to get more tan, but it's going to become work. And I'm going to have to sit out in the sun with one of those mirrors on my chest and, uh, you know, it's going to become a full-time job. And even then I'm only going to get marginal, marginal gains, marginal gains to my tan. So dude, it's totally a thing. It's a thing. Some people get more tan than other people. Okay. So you do have limitations and you have to, you have to recognize those. And at some point you're just wasting your time or you're just the, the amount of extra effort that it would require to get marginal improvements is no longer worth it. You need to be very careful about going beyond that because of the messages that you're getting from, you know, influencers, like people who say, you know, you you know, you got to work out like it's your job. No, do your job like it's your job. <laughs> work out like you brush your teeth. Do it enough that that your hygiene is there, your body is healthy, you're, str you're strong, you look the way you look, your breath doesn't smell, right? That kind of stuff, okay? Um, nobody brushes their teeth like it's their job because they want to have whiter teeth or something, right? You Basically, you, you rub your teeth off just the same way that you end up overtraining, okay? So, and the, here, here's the other thing, right, about this about this nonsense perspective. It's all frequency and blah, 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 blah. Like, if you just spend, if, you, if your goal is to get as tan as possible, so what you do is what you just spend all the time you can out in the sun, you know what's going to happen? You're going to raise your risk of skin cancer, right? And it's the same deal with exercise. You can't just keep exposing yourself to the stress of exercise without your body breaking down and having lifelong injuries that will mess up your ability to do the things you want to do later in life uh, or even at the time, right? Okay, so here are the kinds of influencers out there that you've probably been bamboozled by in the past. One is people who, in the analogy, are just dark-skinned people, man. Like some people are have African heritage and their skin is just super dark or they're Indian or they're whatever, wherever they came from, their genetics dictate that they're just going to have darker skin. And this is the dude that can look at weights and get big, right? Or is already just naturally big. If you've ever seen the picture of those cows that have like the myostatin inhibiting gene or whatever it is, and they're just super jacked up, or the whippet dogs that are just, just muscles on muscles on muscles. Do you think that they got that way through frequency of exercise, right? Do you think that they, they got that way because they're working out like it's their job? Hell no. They're just sleeping and eating and doing the stuff that those sorts of animals usually do, which is mostly just standing around. Okay, it that's genetic. That's genetic. And some people are just mus muscular freaks. Okay, and so if you're following some dude on YouTube who's saying, I look this way because I work out this way, and they, they just look completely unrealistic, it's probably because they have completely unrealistic uh, genes. <laughs> genes that are just, you know, one in, a, one in a million genes. Okay, so that's one group of influencers. That are, that are full of crap and you shouldn't listen to because they don't know what they're talking about. The other, another one is the, one, the ones who, again, in the analogy, use tanning beds and spray on tans. So <laughs> these are gonna be the people that are just, you know, taking that TRT and human growth hormone and they've got their cocktails and they're just juiced up and they got veins popping out all over the place and they're, you know, 250 pounds at 6% body fat or something like that big old round delts and stuff like that. Okay, man, obvious. those guys, you should be always on the lookout. Basically now, whenever I find some person who's talking about fitness, the first thing I ask myself is, is this person on something? You know, what are the major markers? Because it's just so easy to get and so common these days. And unless you're the kind of person who wants to jump into tanning beds and use spray on tans, uh, man, you need to be on the lookout for those, for those scam artists because that's what they are. Okay. Now, there are some people out there, uh, you know, like the biggest natty fitness influencers, your, your uh, 
Jeffrey Verdi Schofields and Alpha Destinies and um, Alex Leonidas' name and Natural Hypertrophy and all those guys, right? Uh, you know, they work out hard. They, fo they focus a lot on their diet. They do all those sorts of things. However, they're what I would call Sicilians in the analogy, right? Now, a Sicilian person doesn't, you know, like they kind of have kind of olive colored skin or something. You know, they have a little bit of darkness to them, maybe a little bit more muscular than your average person, but it doesn't really stand out. However, they can just get way tanner than most people of European or origin, certainly much darker than I could ever get. And here's the thing about that. People who can get really tan like that are also tend gonna tend to be the ones who respond best to frequent sunshine, right? Like, because they have that much more capacity to get, to get tanned, then they have that much more room to grow, so they have that much more ability to just, you know, respond to, to the sunlight. And so, more frequent sunlight is gonna benefit them, whereas for others, it, it you know, it would sort of cap out or, or it wouldn't necessarily provide the same benefit. Like, if you respond well to frequency, you probably also have the capacity to get bigger. Those two, two, two things sort of go hand in hand. And, you know, we live in such a image-driven world that, you know, you these people, people like this, you know, become the most popular uh, natural bodybuilding channels based upon the fact that they look the way that they look and a lot of hard work and a lot of deep thinking and a lot of trial and error went into it. But there's, there's also how many people who did just the same amount of hard work and just the same amount of, you know, trial and error and all these sorts of things and just never, they just don't have the genetics for it. And so they're, and their message disappears because they don't have the, the image that, that sells a channel, right? They don't, they're not aspirational in the same way based entirely on their image. Okay. So like, let's take a friend that I have, right? This guy's Irish in heritage. His skin is super pale. And this guy like could never get tan, right? It, it doesn't matter how much frequency he got or whether he tries to dial in just the right amount of uh, exposure, right? His limitations on being tan are just so low that it, it, like he might get like the tiniest little bit, but more often than not, he's going to burn, right? And a lot of people are like that with resistance training, right? Now that doesn't mean they, they shouldn't get sun. It just means that you can't take another person's prescription and apply it to yourself because they look the way that you want to look. Well, do they probably also have the genes that you want to have <laughs> and do and doing what they're doing isn't going to give you those genes. All right. So, uh, so here's the deal though. Does any of this mean that if you have, you know, bargain bin level genetics in terms of building muscle that you shouldn't be working out? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And this is another argument that I, you know, they're constantly making is about, oh, it's just a reason to be lazy. You talk about your genetics and stuff like that. I'm here to tell you, look, your genetics are absolutely a limiting factor. One, there is no way around that. And also you should still exercise just like, just like you should still get sun every day, right? It's important for, for your health. You need vitamin D for bone health, for your immune system, for your energy levels, for your mood, all of these things are benefit from getting sun exposure, right? So even if you're not a kind of person who can get a tan, that's going to make you look, look healthy and it's going to, you know, make you look sexy or whatever it is, that doesn't mean you shouldn't still go out there and get it because it's good for you. And, uh, and so it's the same thing with exercise. So yeah, regardless of your genetics, you should still go exercise. And, and just be careful who you're listening to, you know, listen to people, listen to people who you think are like you rather than people, the people you want to look like, right? Because the people you want to look like are, are probably not the people that you ever can look like. It's just, it's just unfortunate. And it does not, it's not a kind of message that's going to sell or make you super popular because everyone wants to hear that the world is full of, you know, pixie dust and rainbow farts and that that's what it's all made of and you can have anything you want and be anything you want and you you can do incredible things and you should always try to do incredible things but it's more about who you become 
as a person than the outcomes that you produce. And because you can't control those outcomes, so much of it is out of your hands. However, who you become is not. That is up to you. All right, thanks.